What does it mean yeah. to reopen the doors today? Um, it's, it's very special, as you can imagine. Martin, we are so pleased to be able to open our churches again, but I'd remind everyone that we have worked very hard, the clergy and volunteers, hundreds of them, to make sure that our churches are safe places um, for worship and for gathering. We know that some people are quite reluctant to, to go back because of everything that has been said, but according to any evidence that I've seen that's available, you are far, far less likely to catch COVID in church than you are in a supermarket or in a school. We do do, we go to great lengths to try and make sure that we are obeying the guidelines as they've been set down, so that everywhere everyone is safe. Uh, yeah, far easier to, to con control a congregation, I guess, than control shoppers or school pupils. I'm sure. <laughs> uh, th there's an obligation, isn't there, in the Catholic faith to, to faith to, to to turn up for mass? Obviously, that's had to be revisited over the past 12 months. I'm sure you want congregations back as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. How do you balance those two? What are you saying to to uh, yes. to the faithful? What we've done is the uh, the bishops' conference. That's the the eight bishops, seven at the moment since Archbishop Tortalia died. Um, we we got together and we agreed to suspend what we call the Sunday precept, which is our obligation that we place upon ourselves to to get to to Sunday mass and to the sacraments um, until the COVID crisis is over, Martin. So we're not. It, it's it's self evident that it would be foolish to oblige people to go to to church in such circumstances. So. We, we encouraged people to uh, to pray together on a Sunday to make the Sabbath holy as best they could and and if, if they wished to to watch mass online and so on but as we all know it's just not the same and I was delighted to see that I was very pleased to see that in Lord Braid's judgment that he had an appreciation of that for all Christians but he did mention the Catholic view on this in particular that the sacraments for us, we, we are not disembodied spirits, we are flesh and blood as well. And gathering together and celebrating the sacraments is very, very important to us. It's central to who we are and to our self-understanding. Imagine, you can't, you can't baptise people online, you know. There, there are some things that, that you have to do in the presence of another person. There are still restrictions, aren't there, Archbishop Cushley, on, on what you can do. There's no singing. All sorts of parts of the traditional service uh, have had to be adapted or postponed for, for now. Um, what about um, the size of the congregations? Because uh, there's a maximum now of 50, but only if a, a a church can cope with that. You know, there are yes. churches and cathedrals, some of them absolutely vast. Do you think that, that, that cap should true. be lifted? It's it's a it's a very tricky one. I, I think for now we ought to be prudent. I'd like to echo what Martin said about about that sense of, of public responsibility and duty. So I, I welcome our churches being open, but I think I would continue to urge prudence and caution and and to be content for now with the with the fifty cap. Um, I look forward very much to the day when I can get 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 my cathedral full again. It seats eight hundred and fifty, and with standing room for one hundred and fifty. And on Good Friday, you can't get in the door usually. Um, and this year, it will only be fifty people um, that that are, will be able to be there. So we're going to miss that and miss it deeply. Um, but I think for now we are still in the in the midst of the pandemic and we are not quite there yet. There's lots of good news about the success of the vaccine and the the numbers going down in hospital and dying and all that. That is to be very much to be welcomed. So we need to play our part in that as well. So let's be let's be prudent for now, I think.